We're now delighted to be joined over the telephone by our guest, Dr. Mohammed Roji, the economic expert. Dr. Mohammed, a very good afternoon to you, sir. Hello, good afternoon for you and our audience. Thank you very much, Doctor, for joining us this afternoon. Now, let me start, uh, Doctor, by asking you, how do you see the importance of the climate uh, conference that is going to be held in the Red Sea Resort city of Sharm el-Sheikh, uh, starting, of course, uh, tomorrow, the arrival of delegations, etc., till the 18th of November this year? Uh, actually, uh, I would like to start uh, my word with a uh, quote uh, about... Uh, <clears throat> sustainability actually and uh, to uh, keep our earth in a good manner uh, actually uh, this quote which is we are not uh, we are not inherited the earth from our ancestors we uh, are lending or borrowing it from our children accordingly it's a global trend to focus on uh, the uh, focus on uh, the climate uh, <clears throat> on the climate change uh, issues and to focus on how uh, to keep it uh, well for our um, for our children um, in my humble opinion uh, it was a positive signal that after the last uh, cop meeting 26 in uh, Glasgow that Egypt uh, to uh, host this huge uh, this huge event uh, this is a positive signal message that Egypt is returning back to play its vital role uh, in the global uh, community uh, this is an addition that we have a lot of mega projects that focusing on uh, renewable energy and the government is putting a lot of incentive uh, for private sector and uh, a lot of uh, and household segment actually uh, to use the renewable energy and to uh, get a lot of to benefit from uh, the green uh, climate or the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's talk a bit about the, uh, you know, some of the most important preparations, Doctor, uh, for the city of Sharm el-Sheikh to hold this very important climate conference. Uh, actually, the meeting uh, seemed to be discussed during uh, the summit agenda, uh, the organizational matters, participants in the meeting who are uh, the members and deputies of the summit president uh, presented uh, <coughs> by election and I believe in, uh, in this meeting a lot of uh, points uh, will, be, uh, will be discussed. One of them is how to decrease uh, the pollution globally and uh, global warming especially as you know and our audience that uh, the global warming uh, led to increase the temperature from, as far as I recall, one degree to one, uh, one to two degrees, actually. Uh, and one of the most important things that how we can count or I can say it, how we can capitalize on the renewable and the green resources to produce energy and how can the governments globally and the yes. private sectors can collaborate yes. to uh, work together to uh, provide the uh, sustainable energy and the green energy globally for the entire people. Absolutely, as well as Keita, as you said. Now, Dr. Mohammed, the conference, uh, you know, is gaining a very special importance, especially because of the severe climate changes uh, that uh, we've seen, as well as the climate disruptions that we have seen all around the world, uh, from Europe to America to even Africa as a continent. Uh, lots of changes in the climate have affected, you know, livelihoods of people, have displaced millions of people, whether as a result of droughts or floodings, etc. We've seen the Egyptian government calling for all the pledges to become realities on the ground. How, and, and, you know, the Egyptian government has said that they will be pushing 
for this towards you know living up to pledges and fulfilling pledges made by developed nations how important do you see this statement by the egyptian leadership um, it comes to top and uh, it comes to top of my head one of the famous quotes for uh, one of the famous strategic planning science called Hannah Mintzberg. It is easy to plan, but it is difficult to implement. Yes. Actually, uh, the government is doing an amazing job, uh, and the presidential leadership. I can recall uh, one of my international friends uh, who was saying, "How can Egypt uh, do that in a short time?" They are balancing between the economic development and, at the same time, the mega project. Despite the fact we have a global issue, the first one, which is the pandemic, and after that, the Russian and Ukrainian war, uh, actually, Egypt is focusing on giving a lot of incentives uh, for, to bring FBI and especially to invest uh, in uh, green projects, let me say, to have a sustainable environment like uh, the CPE, uh, CPS, sorry, CPS project, uh, solar, power, uh, solar power plant, which can, uh, which is, ca is counting actually to produce energy uh, through uh, sustainable energy, from sustainable uh, energy. Uh, in addition to a lot of mega projects uh, to do that, agriculture projects, a lot of things. And in my humble opinion, that if we can uh, continue and sustain this, Egypt will have, uh, in my humble opinion, uh, an advanced position in terms of sustainability, uh, in terms of uh, keeping uh, a lot of things to uh, avoid the climate change and support a lot of things. And for the first time, I can see easily and uh, our audience that uh, the private sector is working closely with the government uh, to have a strategic goal, which is to have a sustainable uh, environment. And this is one of our strategic vision mm. uh, that the presidential leadership is focusing on it. Absolutely. And doctor, as you said, Egypt has worked with lots of uh, organizations as well as the private sector and has taken a number of steps to lead by example and reduce the effects of climate changes. Uh, we've seen moves, for example, in the transport sector, uh, 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 irrigation, uh, energy consumption as well as renewable sources of energy all these in order to uh, you know cater for climate change and uh, fight the effects of climate change how do you see the achievements so far that Egypt has gained uh, in this field uh, actually uh, according to the global community Egypt is working on is on the right track let me say it loudly uh, we have a lot of mega projects uh, like uh, Suez Canal development, healthcare projects, uh, hospitals, universities, mining projects, renewable energy projects, and this is uh, the new road network. You can easily uh, realize uh, a lot of development on uh, the new uh, road network, uh, the tunnels under the Suez Canal that have. Uh, been opened uh, a major role linking Sinai to motherland and facilitating investment and the trade in it. Um, actually, uh, a lot of those things, the global community uh, say that Egypt is in a race against time to implement several mega projects development. Yes. Uh, and this is possibly, if we can, uh, quantify, let me quantify, uh, if we can quantify this, uh, we can quantify that the GDP growth, which is actually uh, the expectation will reach between 5.5% to 6% uh, in year 21, uh, in year actually uh, 22, uh, 2022, 2023, and this is one of the most uh, precious uh, 
uh, figures that will uh, impact uh, will impact us and you can see loudly what's happening you can see easily what's happening globally we have a global uh, a global uh, inflation wave and you can see that the federal reserve increases the interest rate uh, for the fourth time uh, and the uh, inflation reached to 9% uh, while here in Egypt due to the mega projects and focusing on renewable energy and a lot of things that positively reflected uh, on us, mm -hmm. we can say that uh, this time, yes. this is reflected on our figures and decrease the deficit of the balance of payment. Mm -hmm. We are on the right track and we Indeed. hope uh, to sustain this according to our 2030 vision to have Absolutely. a sustainable economy. Right. I'd like to thank you very, very much, Dr. Mohamed Rujdi, our economic expert and our guest for this afternoon. Thank you very much, sir, for your time and your insight and a short break. And we'll be right back to continue. Stay tuned.